Hey everyone, Mr. Kaczynski again, continuing on with reflections in IXL's 8th grade math. A little more about reflections. So in one of my last videos here, we talked about rules of reflection over the x and y axis. Let's do that real quick here. Um, so z is currently 4 units to the left of the y axis. We would want to make it 4 units to the right of the y axis. Remember that when you connect um, those points, the original image to its new image, you get a line that is a couple of things. Number one, it's cut perfectly in half by the line of reflection and it meets the line of reflection at a 90 degree angle. We also talked a little bit about the rules um, about when you reflect an object over the y-axis that xy becomes negative xy. So let's take a quick look at what that means. So we had point z that is at negative 4, positive 4, and when you reflect it over the y-axis, where did it end up? At 4, negative 4. Alright, so notice how the x value became opposite of what it was. That's what that negative sign means. It means take the opposite of whatever x was. And that's your new x. And the y value just stays the same. which I had the wrong y value to begin with. So negative 4, negative 4. There we go. All right, so we're not asked to do this, but let's take a look at it. What if we do a reflection over the x-axis? The rule for that is that xy becomes x negative y. So if, if we've got z at um, negative 4, negative 4, and we apply this rule, then z, we'll call it double prime, is going to be x stays the same, so that would be it was negative 4, it's going to stay negative 4. y becomes opposite, it was negative 4, it'll become positive 4. So negative 4, positive 4. Would that be a reflection over the x-axis? So this is the x-axis. If we connect the original to the new image, z prime, um, yep, a couple things happen there. Number one, we get a line, that red line is cut in half by the line of reflection, and it meets the line of reflection at a 90 degree angle. So there's a quick review on reflection over the y and x-axis. Now we're going to reflect over um, some different things. This line right here is called the line y equals x. It's where all your y values equal your x values. 5 equals negative 5, negative 6 equals negative 6. All right, so if we want to reflect over that line, um, we'll just start approaching it right here. So maybe I'll draw my red line in right now. <clears throat> so if we meet this, see there's our red line that meets at a 90 degree angle with the line of reflection. And then we'll just count this distance. This isn't actually one, this diagonal. It's the square root of two. But anyway, it's one diagonal unit, two diagonal units, three diagonal units, a half of a diagonal unit. So we'll go three and a half the other way. One, two, three would be right. Oh, I'm sorry. One, two, three and a half is right there. So that would be this point right here would be M prime. So if I fix my diagonal line, notice that not only does it meet the line of reflection, um, at a 90 degree angle, but it's the same distance on this side as it is on this side. So maybe this is a good time to introduce the rule for reflecting over the y-axis. Let's look and see what happened here. Uh, M was at 6, negative 1. And where did it end up? Where is M, M prime? It's at negative 1, positive 6. for my computer here it's spinning a little bit on me going slow this morning so it's at m negative six so what does that mean oops that means that we just flip the um, x and y values so your new x is your old y and your new y is your old x we'll see that more as we get into future videos all right, now we're reflecting over the line y equals negative x, y equals negative x. All right, so let's, uh, let's take m. Now let's take l. We'll start with l. Okay, how about that? We'll go off back order. 
um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half diagonal units. So we're going to go seven and a half diagonal units the other way. There's a half. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To be honest, that's probably the easiest way for you to do it when you're doing it on IXL. Uh, K, one, two, three, four, five, six and a half units. There's our half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half units would be right there. There's L prime. M, one, two, three and a half. One half, one, two, three. So there's three and a half. There's M prime. And N prime, you can probably guess where it's going to go, but check this out. One, two, three, four and a half. There's our half. One, two, three, four. There's N prime right there. So our new image would look like this when we reflect over the line y equals negative x. So that rule, and again, we're just kind of introducing these rules right now for reflection over the line y equals negative x, is this. You, you, your new x is the opposite of your old y, and your new y is the opposite of your old x. So let me show you just with, how about one example? We'll look at point L, which was at negative 7, negative 6. And where does L prime end up? It ends up at positive 6, positive 7. Sorry, that was supposed to be negative. So it ends up at positive 6, negative 7. No, it doesn't. It ends up at positive 6, positive 7. There we go. So um, notice how the x and y values are flipped and they're opposites of what they were. Again, we'll get to more of that later. Right now, you can just use the counting method, and that would probably be a pretty good introduction. We don't have a rule um, for this. I mean, we could make one, but it's a little bit beyond what we need right now. So when we're reflecting over lines that aren't the x-axis, aren't the y-axis, maybe it's best if we just understand um, that, oh, this is too below the line of reflection. We want to go too above the line of reflection. So y equals negative 6 is this line right here. It's a vertical or a horizontal line at negative 6. Um, if we want to reflect over that line, we just count up to it. And then it was two units below. We want to make f prime two units above. So, <clears throat> um, and again, remember this idea where when we connect the corresponding points, um, it meets the line of reflection at a 90 degree angle, and it's cut in half by the line of reflection. One more. Um, Let's do this one here where we're reflecting over the line x equals negative 1. That's this purple line right here. It's x equals negative 1. So what we'll do is take d and notice that it's, it's not 6 to the left of x equals negative 1. It's only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left. So we'll count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right. That's where um, d prime would be. E is 2 to the left of it, so we would make it 2 to the right of it, which is actually at 1, negative 3, not 2, negative 3. Uh, F is 2 to the left, we'll make it 2 to the right. And G is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from, from it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is where G prime is going to be. So there's our new shape after a reflection across the line X equals negative 1. One more time, this idea of connecting corresponding vertices, connect G to G prime, connect E to E prime. Each one of those lines are parallel to each other because they're both meeting the line of reflection at a 90 degree angle, and each one is cut in half by the line of reflection. So that should more than get you going on this skill, reflections, graph the image in section P of IXL's eighth grade math.